pause for worship today. We hear words of wisdom from Solomon and from the Gospel of Matthew, calling us to always remember that God is merciful and that God is compassionate to all people. We sing our gathering song, 508, as rain from the clouds.
there any God besides you, whose care is for all people, to whom you should prove that you have not judged unjustly? For your strength is the source of righteousness, and your sovereignty over all causes you despair all. For you show your strength when people doubt the completeness of your power, and you rebuke any insolence among those who know it. Although you are suffering in strength, you judge with mildness and with great forbearance you govern us, for you have power to act whenever you choose. Through such works you have taught your people that the righteous must be kind, and you have filled your children with good hope, because you give repentance for sins. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who has sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat, and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed into your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat as well. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first, and bind them in bundles to be burned, and then gather the wheat into my barn. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Our first reading today was from the Wisdom of Solomon. We rarely hear readings from this book because it's from the Apocrypha a collection of readings that were not included into the Bible, but were considered valuable by the early church and were kept and treasured. And we have the option to read from the Apocrypha from time to time in the lectionary during the church year. Now, I usually choose not to read from them, but today's reading from it will give us an interesting lens to which view the gospel that we've just heard. And Luther would have loved this reading we heard this morning from the wisdom of Saul, as it reflects on his teachings very well, and his theology and his understanding of God, how we live God's life. It asks a question that makes us think about who we are and about the God we worship. It asks, is there any other God who would be concerned that you do not judge others unjustly or harshly? Any other God who is so kind and so merciful to all? God cares deeply that we live justly, with mercy, with compassion. God's forgiveness towards us empowers us to be forgiving to others to be mild and to be kind in our ways, as we heard in the wisdom of Solomon. We are created in the image of God, and so we were created to live in the same way that God chooses to live, and to treat others as God chooses to treat us. As Lutherans, we do not make often very much of the fact that we are created in the image of God, in the nature and personality of God, to be God's beloved ones. In some ways, we're rather obsessed with sin, our own sin and other people's sin, our unworthiness and sometimes other people's unworthiness, to the point where we see or fail to see and celebrate the goodness that is inherently ours as the children of God. There is a, a nobility and an honor and a dignity and a responsibility in being the children of God, created in the image of God, the beloved children of God. I sometimes cringe when we sing a hymn that thanks God for saving a wretch like me. Granted, there's been days when I felt pretty wretched and could probably sing that hymn with a fair amount of sincerity. But usually I feel more like a beloved child of God. God did not create us to be wretched. God created us in the image of God and that's what we will 
always be. Even if we're the most naughty, ill-mannered, sinful, and spoiled kids on the block, we'll still be the children of God. We often think that all that God sees and all that God is concerned about is our sinfulness. But who among us, when we look at our children, our own children, only see their weakness and their flaws and their failures? Why would our God, who loves us with an unconditional and steadfast love, see us as wretched and hopeless and faithless, even if those were our defining traits? The wisdom of Solomon reminds us that God is forgiving and merciful and capable of an everlasting and steadfast love. And when God looks at us, God sees at least a bit of what we were created to be in the Garden of Eden. It's interesting to note that the writer of the wisdom of Solomon said that the merciful are mild, yet strong. Forgiveness and mercy are signs of strength as Christians. Harshness and a, a judgmental spirit is a product of fear and self-righteousness, and they're not very admirable traits in Christians. They're also a sign of spiritual immaturity. Wisdom teaches us to leave all judgment up to God and never to make judgments and decisions about the bounds of God's mercy and God's grace for anyone. Be careful what you label a weed and endeavor to pull out of God's garden, we are told. Your weeding may do more harm than good, Jesus says. I have weeds growing among the lobelia in my flower garden. And if I try to pull out these weeds, the lobelia ends up coming out with the weeds, being uprooted and dying. Furthermore, the lobelia seems to be growing very nicely, even using the weeds for support. The weeds have become quite useful, and they've even become beneficial. I remember what my son once told me. A weed is just a plant that no one has found a use for yet. I always thought he was saying that just to get out of weeding the garden, but he may have been on to something. My worry is, is that if I do not remove the weeds, people are going to think I'm a very lousy gardener. As a pastor, it's never my job to weed the garden of God, but I am allowed to use miracle grow with wild abandon except I have to be careful around zucchinis. <laughs> there are people who think that the church, like gardens, should be weed-free, not realizing that we might just be weed ourselves. The worst sin in Jesus' eyes is self-righteousness, probably because self-righteousness is so toxic, it's a poison to all the other plants. The other truth is that we are all a bit weedy, even when we are blooming beautifully in God's garden. You could argue that both St. Peter and St. Paul were really weeds in God's garden. Yet God made both of them bloom in the life of the church, despite their many shortcomings and their many weaknesses, even their sin and their absolute failure. So we grow where God plants us. And often our lives reflect glory for God in ways that only God can see. And for this, we shall always be filled with gratitude for such kindness and love at work in our world. Amen. We sing the hymn of the day.
Let us pray. Tender-hearted God, you care for us all and you never fail to show us your kindness. Your forgiveness and love gives us hope, not just for ourselves, but for all people. Inspire us to be those created in your image, strong, loving, and wise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your spirit leads us in faith to call out to you as our loving Father and conquers our fears. Such hope brings us patience to trust in your goodness and celebrate your promises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us holy wisdom in this difficult time. Give our leaders discernment so that intelligent decisions can be made for the health and well-being of all your children. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of gentleness, we pray for all who struggle with mental illness, made more difficult by this time of isolation and anxiety. Help us care for those who are struggling. Grant us patient and understanding hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy. God of healing, we pray for the ill, for David, recovering from surgery, and for all fearful of illness. Grant us your healing presence and watch over those who care for the sick. Lord, in your mercy. Watch over our loved ones who cannot be with us in these days of physical distancing. We long for the times when we can be together again. Until then, bind our hearts together in the love of Christ and the Spirit's presence, which is everywhere, in everyone. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, grant us, gracious God. Gathering all our prayers into one, we pray the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Bless us and keep us in the risen life of Christ our Lord. Amen.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.